Hey guys, EST here with a quick follow up from a video that I shot in the summer. It is now late December, also known as the worst possible time in the northern latitudes of North America where I live to get any kind of sunlight. So right here I've got a battery bank hooked up to another battery bank and then a little voltmeter and amp meter plugged into it. And I just wanted to make sure that the cable and the device can be charged at 10 watts, which it looks like, no it can't, it's uh, well 5.18 times 1.78, 9.2 watts. It might just be a safety thing where it doesn't quite approach 10, or it might be that this like $9 voltmeter doesn't work so well. My guess is it doesn't quite charge at 10 watts. So we're going to be retesting this solar panel, which is allegedly 6 watts. The last time that I uh, plugged it in, which it has just direct USB in the circuit there, kind of nice, uh, was in July, which is one of the best times to get sunlight. Oh wow, that does not want to focus. But in some decent cloud cover, we got 3 watts, and in the sunlight, I got about 5, so pretty close to the spec. Ooh, what's that mysterious item? Hmm, I'm not supposed to show that until a future video. Oh well. Well, here's the completely useless footage I got because I had to point it straight into the sun. Yes, that's where the sun is shortly after noon in late December. Well, at least in the extreme northern United States, that's where it is. But uh, according to what I wrote down, it was about 4.4 volts and about 0.6 amps. So two and a half, approaching almost three watts. Certainly enough to put a little bit of juice into a phone. Now, first of all, remember, we never got it up to 6 watts in the last video. The closest I got, and this wasn't terribly consistent, was upwards of about 5 watts. And that was facing directly into the sun in insane temperatures. And that was in, oh, I said July, it was actually May. I did retest it in July, though, because it was a particularly sunny day. I've actually tested this like 5 times, so I just know what it can spit out generally. Now, I have a 10 watt panel that is double to triple the surface area of this one so i'm starting to wonder if this really is six but the fact that i got you know kind of close to flirting with five hey but in the summer you know two and a half maybe three i saw some spikes so you can go ahead and just reduce that by almost 50 percent it looks like at least for this model not generally across every solar panel that exists now not considering cloud cover it looks like those numbers are pretty accurate to my longitude I looked up a couple charts from all over the place, and the average production in December was just under 400 kilowatt hours, and that's for a very large solar install on the roof, obviously. And on May and June, it was closer to like 850 to 900. The weird thing is October was still about 600 and some, so December really was anomalously bad, and then January was back up in the high 500s. But on that chart and every other one, yeah, it was about half in the absolute worst time of winter. So if you've got your numbers, charts, capacities, you know, charge times, all that, all planned out, everything specced out, you got your equipment, you're about to buy it, just keep in mind that in the winter in the north, you can just go ahead and cut that number right in half. But yeah, on a winter day so bright that you can't go outside without sunglasses or get snow blinded, and all the bouncing around of the sun rays from the white snow still resulted in a significantly lower amount of watts, not to mention that it's cloudy for an enormous portion of the winter. So to answer the question of can you still use this device effectively, in the winter the answer is yes, and in fact it's a little bit nicer to lithium batteries because they're not sitting out in ridiculous temperatures in the direct sun. I tried this inside my car and got similar results through the window, so yeah, I'd say it's usable, just, you know, generally it's going to be a bit diminished, so keep that in mind. I still think it's a good model to own because if you just sit there, you know, for a couple hours in the sunlight, you're going to get a good portion of your cell phone battery. And in fact, about three hours would be enough to go about 50% on the average smartphone, just total ballparking it because there's a lot of factors. And because of that, I really would still recommend this device. It is tough as nails. You would have to almost try to damage this other than scratching the surface. It is unbranded and I don't really have a model number for it, but uh, if you look up 6 watt solar panels on pretty much any resale website, you'll find this one. They're still going for under 20 bucks, so uh, it's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Although, hey, wait a minute, didn't I just show a mysterious device? Oh, that wasn't supposed to be in this video. Maybe before you make a purchase decision, you should wait and see what I've got in store for that. I mean, the video title may or may not be how to recharge your cell phone with just about anything. Why rely on solar when there's other sources of energy? In case you can't tell, I'm very excited about that video. So hey, subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching. Check out some of our other cool content, and I'll see you guys next time.